Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Dave and I do tech reviews and helpful videos, kind of like this one. Uh, on the iPad videos that I've done in the past, I've had a lot of people ask me, how the heck do I make my Android phone and iPad work at the same time every single day in my workflow? After using these things every single day, I've found they're actually way easier than I initially thought. So I'm going to be walking you guys through sort of my everyday usage, different projects that I work on, and how I integrate these different applications to make these two ecosystems that are at odds coexist and hopefully you guys get some ideas along the way as well okay so for those of you guys who have been around for a little while now you guys know I am an actor and recently thankfully I was able to finish production on a movie that I both wrote and directed super excited about that we're in the final stages of post-production but one of the applications that was amazing for me in terms of organizing materials that I needed to send to production team and a cast was bubble up bubble up basically lets you consolidate any files that you want it can be a PDF file documents Excel sheets picture video it doesn't matter into one folder file that can then be rolled up into a web link that you can share with anyone and they have access to without needing to download the application itself, which removes a massive barrier to entry that you've seen a lot of different applications. To put it plainly, I had, say, my production team. I had my cast, the actors and actresses. For the production team, I put in a folder the script, the shot list for the different angles and things like that we were going to be using, as well as other production materials in one folder into one web link that I could share with them and they could access anywhere they want without the application. And for the cast, I had in one folder, separate for them, the script, character breakdowns, um, their call sheets for when they were supposed to be there and when or where they were supposed to be and when rolled it up into one file into one web link that could be shared with all of them and they didn't need the application to access it it's a really user-friendly way to just consolidate and organize information and share materials with people basically i could just put everything into one spot send it and forget about it the rest was taken care of now a lot of you are probably wondering what does this website look like how does it work so what's nice is that they give you a lot of tools for customization for your web pages Myself personally, when sending the info to my team, I didn't really spruce anything up. I was just kind of putting the information in there, giving it to them and moving on to the next thing. But they give you a lot of customization in terms of colors, the main page picture that you can put on here. You can set an image for the web page. You can change the image, the size of it. You can add social media links. You can also change the view of the page itself. So you can change things to say an outline view. You can change things to say a carousel view. You can also change the overall theme. So they have a couple of different themes here. You're probably wondering, well, if I'm just sharing information, why do I need all of these customization options? Bubble Up can also be used as a pitch deck for those of you who are freelancers, freelance actors, much like myself, those of you who are on Fiverr, or say you're an athlete looking to put together a, an athletic reel for, say, a college or a sports team, or say you're just working for a client, you can spruce up Bubble Up to look more presentable, more professional and then present your information there. And when you send it to your client or to the university or whoever it is, everything is right there for them and they don't need to do anything else. You can use Bubble Up as a vision board also. So say you're looking for something to motivate you, you're looking for new information on something, Bubble Up actually has access to tons of different articles and information that you can populate your application with. So say you need some motivation for something, you can look up different things for financing, lifestyle, for your pets or whatever it is. Now, the next application that's been incredibly helpful for me is Dropbox. And I'm sure a lot of you guys at home have probably heard of Dropbox. If not, it's kind of like Google Drive. You can upload different files like documents, videos, pictures, and things like that. But I do think that Dropbox handles the heavy load and the heavy lifting of sending back and forth video files better than Google Drive does. So as I mentioned before, I'm in post-production for my film. And one of the last steps that we're in is actually working with this great musician who's composing the soundtrack and score for the film. And he'll send me over large video files with different scenes and different compositions that he has placed on those scenes. I get to watch them, listen to them, and then send him notes if I want something tweaked a little bit here or there. And I find that the video encoding for Dropbox is much faster than in Google Drive 
in my experience. I've tried uploading even say like different clips and videos for my personal acting reel. And I think the encoding is much slower on Google Drive than on Dropbox. Now I do think that Google Drive works exceptionally well when you're using your sort of everyday kind of files like your PDF files, scans of pages, Word documents and things like that. I think that for heavy lifting in everyday use, I think Dropbox is a bit more capable than Google Drive is, at least in my experience. Okay, so one of the other applications that helps me every single day is Adobe Acrobat. So for all of the books that I have for grad school that I download legally or illegally, it consolidates all of them into one application that of course I can sync between any device. And of course you can have different files here like your PDF files and things like that, but I love it for books and I'm gonna show you why. So say for example, I want to use the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the DSM-5, I use this every single day. This book is 970 pages and trying to sift through it without actual physical pages would be a pain. But what's nice is that this application actually bookmarks appropriate sections and chapters for you to make utilizing whatever ebook you're using easy. So say for example, I will I can click on this ribbon up here for bookmarks that has your title page, your contents, the preface, as your sections for the diagnostic criteria and code, which say for example, I wanted to go to. I click on the little arrow over there. Now everything is right there for me. Your sleep wake disorders, obsessive compulsive disorders, depressive disorders, all of the above are right there. So say I wanted to go to the anxiety disorders. I click on it and now it'll take me right to that section where now I can peruse all the different information and criteria for different anxiety related disorders, which is awesome. What's also cool is that you can actually change the way that you view your books. So I prefer the long continuous stream. So basically I'm scrolling and there's no stopping or starting. Everything is just right there. The pages kind of flow into one another, which is nice. But say, for example, I wanted a single page layout, I can do that too. So basically with this, you're swiping from left to right that you probably would with most other electronic book readers. Or you can go to the two page layout, which is also nice. You have both pages right there for you. Of course, you swipe left to right and it's right there. Now what's nice is that with any of these different layouts, you can use the scrubbing function down on the bottom. So that way you can go from page one to page 970 very quickly. And you also have a reading mode as well as a night mode, which is basically going to make things easier on the eyes if you're doing those late night reading sessions or early morning reading sessions, one, 2 a.m., it's dark outside. Don't wanna bring your eyes, that's there for you. Now for these next three, it's actually super simple. They're part of the Google Suite. So you have your Google Docs, Google Sheets, and Google Keep. Google Docs, I wrote the entire script for my film in that software. And what's really nice about Google Docs also that you can actually share folders and files with different groups. So for example, I also use Google Docs for all of my grad school papers and my cohort and myself, we can actually share, say, research articles or study guides with one another in one consolidated group folder and one shared file. So whenever someone puts it in there, everyone has access, super easy and it's awesome. Now Google Sheets is basically Excel and it works functionally the same way. I don't use it for a ton of super extensive things, but I did use it for my shot list for my film. You can create different categories and columns and resize and rename them accordingly, depending on what it is that you are going for. Now for Google Keep, I don't know if that's something that I would absolutely recommend to everyone, but it's something that works for me personally and it works works, of course, on both my iPad and my Galaxy. And what I like about that is that you can put a lot of different information there, but you can also categorize them, color code them. You can attach different labels and you can search them up by whatever the first letter or the phrase or the word is. You can look up Gym Locker and it'll come up there and then you have your information. Now, full disclaimer for you guys, Bubble Up is sponsoring this video, but the only reason they're in this video is because I do genuinely use the application on a very frequent basis. I use it for all of my acting contracts, for my call sheets, acting notes, headshots, and all of the files that you guys saw in the video. I consolidate all of the information in there because it's a nice, neat place to just put everything. It really is. Point blank, the app wouldn't have made it into this video if I didn't use it myself frequently, or if I didn't think it had inherent value for you guys but I do use it, so here we go. 
Okay, so that's it's not it's not there. Oh, we're back over on this camera angle now. Uh, if during the video you guys find yourself thinking these all kind of seem like no-brainers. Yes, that is the point. When I first got the iPad, I got it really primarily for a stronger machine so I could make videos for you guys. And me being an Android user, in the beginning, this was kind of a headache trying to figure out why doesn't this work? Why doesn't this work? Why can't I just do this? But I found over time, there are actually tons of different resources and applications that you can use to make the two things coexist beautifully. Kind of like that. So for those of you who are on the edge that are Android users that are afraid to get an amazing device like the iPad Pro or the iPad, don't be. You can absolutely make that jump. You can absolutely be living in both ecosystems at once and still get done what you need to get done. If you're new to the channel and you're looking for more content like this, I'd consider hitting the like button and subscribe button so you can stay up to date with what I am doing next. Have a fantastic remainder of your day, afternoon, and night, depending on when it is that you are watching this and as always, peace, love, adios.